In Smash and other platform fighters, if a move is very strong, it ends up being used a lot. People lab and grind, ensuring that the meta and counterplay develop around this move. You learn to deal with it. However, what if there was a limiting condition to a move, requiring you to think about how often you could use it? In this way, Multiverses, the new DC-based platform fighter coming out, has a unique approach on some strong moves. Move cooldowns. Let's talk about how Smash has dealt with move spam in the past and compare it to the Multiverses approach. First, we have to understand how Smash deals with really strong moves. The first way is an external method, which is patching. If a move is busted, like Meta Knight Down Air in Project M 3.0, then the move is removed. If a move is considered very strong, like Luigi Grabbed a Death in Smash 4, aspects of the move can be changed. This can be good and bad. It is good to identify what aspects of a move are healthy and good for the game you want to play. Certain moves just by looking at them can be identified as too strong. This can be a tedious and highly subjective process. For people who learned a particular way to play, this can be detrimental to their playstyle in a competitive scene like Smash, where it can take months and years to build muscle memory. Also, by nerfing a move early, you limit counterplay to the move from developing, and sometimes the counterplay can be cool. Smash also has an internal way of dealing with good moves called move staling. The game stores an internal queue of past moves, and depending on the last moves used, your move will receive a reduction in damage. For example, if you are Hungry Box in Melee, and the last move in your queue was Bear, if you do Bear again, your move will have a reduced damage, based on the percentage reduction that slot of the queue corresponds with. This queue goes up to 9 moves in Melee, and will stack. If Bear was the last move used, and the sixth last move used, it would receive the appropriate reduction from both of these positions in the stale moves queue. This rarely disincentivizes moves to be used. A Shine is still a Shine, Jigglypuff Bear is still Jigglypuff Bear. They're really powerful moves because of attributes besides damage. The slight percentage difference does nothing to change the fundamental attributes to the move. Bubba Bubba Junebug. When Falco's laser is stale, it has less hit stun, therefore making shield pressure less safe. Alright man, I know there are definitely interactions in the minutia of Smash that make move staling very important, and it can be important to unstale moves for these interactions. I am referring more to the macro and not the micro, the general strategy as opposed to the minute tactics. And in general, move staling does not disincentivize using extremely powerful moves. Multiverses also has a similar mechanic to this called Attack Decay, which in its current iteration functions similarly to the stale move mechanic in Smash. It is worth noting that this is subject to change, but for the current meta of multiverses where kill moves are quite strong, it would be important to change up which moves you're using so that your kill move doesn't get nerfed. Let's get to the real innovative stuff. In fighting games, move cooldowns aren't seen as much. They're more common in MOBAs like League of Legends. Platform fighters are quite different from traditional fighters already, so might as well experiment with some new stuff, right? Skills are seen as an important way to do X, do Y, do Z, and manage your resources accordingly. Certain moves in multiverses, such as Wonder Woman's Down Special, will display a meter once used, signifying the move cannot be used again. Once the meter is filled up, you can use the move again. It is worth noting again that the way cooldowns are displayed is part of the open alpha and may be subject to change. This is fun, because it still rewards development of that move. People are still going to learn how to use Wonder Woman's Down B and counterplay it, but it would manifest in small bursts rather than entire games. You want to use it? You better make it count. You want to be the Batman? Better use that battering while it's got a little cooldown on it. It also introduces a new way to balance moves without changing the attributes. Superman Up Smash, for example, is an armored combo starter and kill move. Needless to say, this is quite strong. However, if the devs did not want to change Superman's kit, rather than nerfing the move, they could add a small cooldown on it. Now Superman players can't just start charging Up Smash in neutral and praying for you to come in on them. They would have to manage their resources effectively. The same thing applies to moves like Taz Tornado, because we all don't want... This aspect of managing which moves you use is fun. While Neutral and Smash has always been about mix-ups, move cooldowns make certain mix-ups explicit. Part of my brain wondered what sort of meta development we would see from Smash if some of the overpowered moves had cooldowns. Hey, you're only allowed to shoot the gun five times this stock, sorry. Then you're on cooldown. It's a neat little way to balance that I've never really thought of. 
Please let me know your thoughts on multiverses and move balance in the comments below. I may make a full video on my thoughts of multiverses, but I think the team is off to a great start. And they're putting new spins on a genre that has been dominated by the same games for oh so long. Overall, my review of multiverses open alpha, 2 out of 5, needs more LeBron James.